Um, welcome to the Nahual Zone. And today is questions and answers. Questions and answers. So fire away anything that may be on your mind or heart that you'd like to ask. <clears throat> and I will do my best to uh, give you replies. It's absolutely fantastically sunny out today in England where I am. And it's one of the best days to be out there. So let's have the first question. Herbert is saying, is it possible to attain a permanent last battle on earth? Posture in life, I see. Even to daily trivia routine, if yes, how? Is it possible to attain a permanent last battle on earth posture in life? Yes, it is. Is it easy to do? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. A anyone who says otherwise to you, believe me, they themselves have not undertaken that quest. Think of it as a quest. Um, my advice is, you know, these big long cycle acts of power that a seeker would like to undertake, like living as if you will die, that has an inbuilt indication of extreme insanity in it. Living as if, no, you will die, but we are so insane that we have to pretend <laughs> as if, right? So last battle on earth, it is very possible Factor in, I don't know, in my personal experience for me and, uh, you know, for myself, factor in about a decade, 15 years, easy, easy. It becomes monumentally easy once you lose your human form. It becomes a lot easier. It's like the difference between uh, walking somewhere and taking a jet plane somewhere. It's, you know, it becomes a lot easier and I wouldn't even say convenient. Your true enemy, your true adversary will surface after you've lost your human form. And that is self-importance. All the work you do in self-importance before losing your human form will pale in comparison. <laughs> but uh, a trained, uh, apprentice or warrior will have trained, will have hopefully been trained properly by their benefactor to be able to deal with that level of, it's not like that level of self-importance, it'll be so subtle, you have to be so fast, your reflexes, uh, your awareness has to be so smooth and fast by that point because you're dealing with an adversary that is subtle, subtle at that point. So it is possible. Um, let's stay with that one. Wow. Oh, wow. There's, how did I? Uh, oh, I see. It just showed me. It just showed me the first uh, thing. Okay. Where is Herbert's question? All right. If so, how? I'm just trying to remember his question. I've scrolled all the way up to uh, your the first comment by CPG. I'll deal with that in a minute. If so, how? How do you arrive there? You know what? There's no other known way. In this one, it's black and white. In this one, it really is. Uh, I will be doing a series of interviews. Interview with an apprentice. Uh, you know, I'll ask any of my apprentices who are, um, uh, you know, willing to be interviewed. And I'll post them here. We might even do live stream. Uh, Zoom live stream and you know stream it here, if they if one of them is feeling brave enough, <clears throat> but they will all to a person agree with me. All the apprentices that I can only talk about myself and my apprentices, that in this one it is black and white. You have to start with cultivating and accessing ever increasing levels of inner silence. Avoid the common mistake of trying to shut your mind up or I am not supposed to be thinking. 
that is uh, just furthering the madness that is already there. You don't want to practice more insanity, right? Uh, you, what you want to do is observe, self-observation. You want to become a master at that. And then things will progress from there. You see, uh, you got, you've got to first overcome fear, which will then give you power. Power will lead to clarity. And your, the, your question is at the clarity level. That clarity will afford you a crystal clear, obvious situation that you're in, which is you will die and you don't know when. And things will change from that point on. Hopefully that answers your question, Herbert. Let me just, wow, you guys have, oh my God, I don't think I'll be able to answer so many questions, but let's just go through some. CPG, my question for Nawal Anam is reincarnation always a result of primordial agnosis. I have no idea what they mean. It sounds very fancy, uh, amazing. I guess not always, I guess I choose because I have clairvoyance, which is not really possible for the... I don't know what you're talking about, man. Uh, just try and sort of uh, couch it in... Uh, I'm very dumb, right? I'm very dumb. I'm not intelligent like you. So <laughs> uh, phrase a question in a way that uh, assumes that you're talking to a very dumb person. Okay. Uh, Herbert, okay, Herbert, I will... Uh, Okay, Herbert, 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 CPG, CPG. Is there anyone else in today? Farid, hi Anam. How, how, how can one increase the duration and depth of one's inner silence? Okay, good question. In the books it was mentioned that for some people it will take a long time before the depth is enough to start seeing. Now I don't know what your expectations are about inner silence and what your motivations are for pursuing inner silence and uh, uh, if, if you're, you know, uh, see, I wouldn't really focus too much on being able to see or not see. Those are um, extremely subjective terms. Let me get out of the sun for a bit. Extremely subjective terms. For the Toltec, seeing means something very different than the average book reader. <laughs> People read a lot of books and uh, we're all armchair football players, aren't we? We're all armchair uh, chess players. Oh, he should have made that move, sitting in the pub and watching TV and really behaving as if we're the next grandmaster, right? So seeing may not, you know, don't, don't focus on that. How long it takes, think about it. If really inner silence is your true pursuit and not results, right? If you're not pursuing future, but you're actually pursuing inner silence, then how long it takes should become irrelevant because you're actually focused on this moment. You see where I'm coming from? So try and, try and purify your intent. Your intent has a lot of confusion, delusion, and future, future rewards in it. Your intent is not pure. Your intent must be purified. If you want to be inner silence, practice inner silence, then the questions shouldn't even be coming. Just get on with it. Uh, one of the things that I like to tell people is, you know, one time a, a fellow martial artist came up to Bruce Lee and said, Bruce Lee, you kick so fast. How do I learn to kick faster? And Bruce Lee said, kick faster and walked away. And this completely applies here. Just pursue inner silence. Forget about the rest. Okay. Hope this uh, helps to um, put some, uh, some clear targeting on your, on your quest. I'll take Oriel. Hello, and I'm from recognizing one's own mechanicalness. How do we keep gathering the requisite force power to do something about them and hopefully build momentum? You don't want to be doing something about anything. If you're hoping to do something about it, then you're not doing it. That's just the way it is. It's what I just said before. If you're hoping to do something about kicking faster, 
I'm taking some workshops about kicking faster. I am going to travel to China, to the Hudang Wudang province and learn from the Grandmaster Qigong about kicking faster. I am going to the American Kickboxing Association. I've written 30 letters to them. They shall teach me how to kick faster. Yeah, there's another guy who's in his basement with his punching bag and he's learning, he's just kicking faster, right? And this doing something about virus, you've got to get it out of your system. Either do it or don't. Simple, clear, direct application. Don't get fooled. Don't let yourself be fooled by your own mind and your own desires and strange uh, swamp-like quicksands in the head. Simply, <clears throat> um, again here, step out of the question, Oriel, for a minute and simply become present. Learn that and the next phase will come. Now here's a practical thing you can do about this, a very, very practical thing. Become, invest time, money, effort, resources, whatever it need, is needed to learn Tai Chi. Learn Tai Chi, pursue it impeccably for the next, say five years, and you will have, you will have embodied the answer to your question. That is the shortest shortcut if there are any shortcuts that's the one i would recommend that's what i and i never say or recommend anything that i haven't done myself over long periods of time making me very proficient in it right so everything every every question i answer is from personal experience or i will say clearly okay this is not something i've experienced but i know about this you see what i mean okay reality backstage don't know maybe a mere the deja vu what is it and is it useful no, it's not. Is it useful to you? If it is, keep it. If it's not, chuck it. Mohsen, to a stalking warrior, when is it useful to start dreaming practices? Okay, it's something meaty here. And how are the outcomes lead to more impeccability? A personal experience would be very helpful. Thank you. Yes, this one. This is a major dead end right here. The, you know, the problem is... Uh, Nowadays, I mean, I don't read books or I'm not in touch with any tall tech people or thank the goddess I'm not, honestly. <clears throat> but uh, I have gathered from people telling me that there's a lot more books now than in Castaneda's time about the tall tech way. And uh, even Don Juan's grandson is jumping into the field and I am Don Juan's, Nagual's grandson, blah, blah, blah. Great. Good for him. So there's a lot of hopefully true knowledge out there. But if we just stay with Castaneda's, uh, you know, expositions, he made so much to do about dreaming that it has led people down a strange garden path. It has led insane beings, instead of doing something about their insanity, creating another prison within a prison that they label as dreaming. And they think, I challenge you, I invite you, I will give you money, I'll give you a hundred pounds. Anyone, open challenge, out to the world, open challenge. I'll give you a hundred pounds, PayPal. If you can tell me one instance, one instance where dreaming practice unfucked you. made you a little less unfucked. And you've got to be honest with yourself. Answer that one brutally honest, brutally honest. Look at your life evidence. Don't just go, yeah, yeah, I'm a big shot. No, no one's a big shot. No one's a big shot. You're a nasty person and so am I. Every, no one's a nice person. <laughs> so let's get very brutally honest and you tell me, go around the world, come back and tell me, is there a single human being who has used dreaming to make them less insane? Make a better version of themselves? No, it's not possible because you're asking a pencil to become an eraser. 
And so we have <laughs> this whole dreaming movement and this fascination with dreaming. And I'll tell you why there's such a fascination with dreaming. Because people want to find escape. People want to find escape. They want to escape the stress of living, the terror of living in a prison farm. That's what all this all, whole obsession of people with dreaming is all about. Dreaming. How do you go about dreaming better? There are plenty of good lucid dreaming courses. I never say, no, don't do it. I never say that to anything. My apprentices all are absolutely free to do whatever they feel is best for them. That's not the problem. What I say is, I never say no. I say no, which means I never say N-O. I say K-N-O-W. Bring awareness into it. Why am I doing this? What, what, what's dreaming going to give me? You've got this much time in the day and this much energy in the day. You can either spend it being present in this moment and starting to unravel your fuckery, or you can spend uh, escaping into dreaming and uh, actually try it. You know, try it. Do some lucid dreaming courses. There are plenty of them around. Any of them will do. There are plenty of good tips that Don Juan himself gave uh, Castaneda. Try those. It'll take you at least two, three years to even get somewhere with it. And then look at yourself t two, three years later and assess. Am I a little less unfucked because I spend all this time learning about dreaming and blah, blah, blah. You see what I mean? So personally, my benefactors said it would be wise for you to, uh, you know, spend, invest in dreaming. <clears throat> and I just, nah, I try, I mean, I, you know, I tried in my training days. I did it for a uh, I don't remember now, I suppose it was six months or something, and it was like, you know what? Fuck this nonsense. <laughs> I'm insane enough without this nonsense on top. And to this day, it has no fascination for me, no excitement for me at all. I find it absolutely useless, absolutely useless for living any kind of quality of life. And... Um, because by the, you know, someone can say, I use dreaming to heal myself, oh, really. Okay, the amount of time you spend to get to a point where you can use dreaming to heal yourself, you can have a set, I'll give you a free session, an hour of EFT, and I'll pull you along 10 years, uh, I'll save you 10 years of healing work, <laughs> one hour. I've done it again and again and again in my life. Not a problem. So you see, it's very inefficient, it's very old school, it's like, Oh, the ancient practices of dreaming. <laughs> yeah, we moved on since then. We moved on. So this is not something personal to you, Mohsen. This is a very big obsession that I see in the, and at the heart of it, and I invite you to really look inside yourself as well. At the heart of it is the need to escape. And personally, I am all about, let's anchor to this moment. Let's look at life in the eyes and say, hey man, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, arms open, I'm here, I'm capable, I can see you, I can be friends with you, we can hang out, I'm not afraid of you, neither are you afraid of me. What a great revelation. So learn to flow with life, your waking life first, become an impeccable person in your waking life. And then later, if you still have any fascination left with dreaming, by all means, pursue it. And remember, never say no, say no. All right, thank you for that question, Mosin. Excellent question. Uh, I feel a little bit bad for all the people who have asked that I might be missing. Um, okay, there's a few conversations going on. That's fine. All right, let's go right down then. 
Katrina, hello. Hi, Alam. In last live, you described that we are gaining knowledge through winning the battle of attrition. Yes. Can you explain it in more detail today? Thank you. Fantastic question. I love it. Fantastic question. All knowledge, and you can verify this true, and I mean a, a true not true knowledge. Knowledge that leads to, as I said, unfucking yourself. <laughs> true knowledge, right? And ultimately, remember, all knowledge leads to self-knowledge. It is the way, that's the way it works. Because, yeah, all knowledge leads to self-knowledge. Let's just leave it there. And knowledge has two, um, two attributes. And you can look back in your life and later on in your life as you journey through your life. And you will see that these two things are always true in anything that has unfucked you, any insight, any change that has happened in your life, painful experiences that have made you change, whatever. That knowledge has been gained about yourself, really, because ultimately that is the only knowledge worth having. It has two attributes. One is, it never comes as you expect it. It really doesn't. It just doesn't. It will always come in its own way, in its own time, and in its own uh, unique uh, flavor. And you will be amazed and surprised, hopefully delighted, if you are fluid enough to flow with each moment, that it does that, that it does not conform to your expectations. Uh, that knowledge does come in surprising ways and to a warrior delightful ways, to the average man painful and frustrating ways <laughs> has to do with self-importance. So knowledge never comes as it is expected, in the way it is expected. And the second one is the one that I mentioned last time, is that knowledge, is, knowledge always comes after a battle of attrition. What do I mean by that? Uh, let's take an example, personal example. I have been fortunate enough to find a absolutely amazing teacher in Indian classical vocals singing. So I train, I train every, twice a day, every day. Uh, and then I have classes. I have a class with my teacher uh, once every two weeks. I've been training in this way for the last three, four years now. And as with all classical type training, you ballet, opera, uh, Eastern Indian classical singing, or instruments, violin, cello, whatever, trumpet, any classical training, you won't believe how rigorous it is, how, how much you have to work, and how much repetition is involved to take you to just basic levels. It is glorious. I love it. I love it. It's the only um, level, rigor, you know, that gives me a bit of a workout in my spirit. Everything else kind of starts to come easily after a while if, uh, for the Toltec warrior, to be really honest, because you've become so lean and efficient that you can, you know, really flow with things. So the classical ways really bring me a healthy, good challenge that I can sink my teeth into. And every little bit of gain I make, it comes after me winning a battle of attrition. And what does that mean? Battle of repetition. So you have my ignorance here. And this is the level I need to get to. So here's my ignorance. And here's sheer repetition of whatever it is that will take me there. And we clash. Right. And I push with repetition i repeat that thing i repeat that thing i repeat it and i push and i push and i push and my own uh you know laziness my own whatever works against us all the forces that have a equal and counter force to whatever we put out push right back they push right back and so you have this gridlock at some point <laughs> where i am just doing the training I'm doing the training, get up every day, do the training, and forget about it. Get up every day, do the training, forget about it. Forget about it. 
and keep doing that and keep doing that, keep doing it. Eventually, by that sheer relentless insistence, I win the battle of attrition. That opposing force suddenly gives, caves in, and I move to the next level. One day I wake up and I practice and I go, oh my God, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. This is amazing. This is amazing. I'm doing exactly what my teacher instructed me to do. And it's taken me uh, two months, let's say. Typically it takes two months at the moment in the level that I am. Two months to get something. There's one, uh, the, uh, the overall lesson, let's say, that she's been teaching me. It's only recently I've won the battle of attrition. Guess how long it took me? It took me two years. <laughs> every day, every day. A little bit of frustration along the way, but not, you know, I'm a bit too, uh, I know myself enough to know how to pursue knowledge. So that's the kind of attrition I'm talking about you will come up against a gridlock. At that point, you will either leave. You will leave. You will admit defeat and you will be like, oh, I can't do this. Or uh, whatever, you will, you will manufacture bullshit reasons to leave and stop doing whatever it is. But if you do not quit and you keep going, with patience, keep hunting knowledge. Eventually, that op opposite force will cave in and you will jump to the next level and <laughs> rinse and repeat again. <laughs> That's what I mean. Excellent question. Thank you for that question. I appreciate that. Hope it answers it. Hope it's a bit uh, more clear to you. Okay, here's, oh my God, what's this? Here's this strange Russian person again. So why are you teaching people on YouTube? What is the point if you're a warrior man of knowledge? Why? No, fuck off. All right. Um, here we go again. Uh, why are you teaching? AKA Thomas of the magic word. Uh, you know what? Uh, how do I block this idiot? Uh, remove. There you are. Bye bye. Uh, low logarithms. What to do if inside us our wishes, targets, changes nearly every day? Yes. How to keep on things and solve them if the next moment the opinion about it changes. <laughs> yes, that's a great question, Logarith. Heck, man, you guys are coming up with some real... I mean, I could do a live on each of these questions and I'd have, we'd have lives for like a year <laughs> coming up. Oh my God, he's still on it. Okay, how does... Yeah, keep laughing and fuck off from me. Um, all right. Uh, Logarth, yeah, okay. There's always one, isn't it? There was, th there was that geezer, what was his name? Fake Juente or someone, fake, fake Jake, whatever his name was. There's always, there's insane people who are forgotten to take their medication. They just come on these, you know, these are the people I was talking about, the armchair chess masters and the armchair warriors. The, watching TV in a pub and going, ah, you should have, we should have, we should have done that and you should have done that to the football players. It's like, Man, you're so foolish and powerless. What the hell? Right, let's get back to logarithms. Rant over. What to do if inside us our wishes start blah, blah, blah. Yeah, consistency is what you're after. Logarithms, you know, drop everything. The best thing that you can do with this is drop everything. Drop everything and simply choose inner silence. It, it, that inconsistency and change of opinions is your subconscious way to... Oh, I see, just meant to help you. Well, that doesn't even make any sense. All right. Um, a, -A, -A, A K A Thomas. I don't know what you mean, man. Just help, meant to help you out in my, the Russian guy. Okay, thank you for, I, but I don't understand what that was. He just copy pasted his uh, comment. Uh, yeah, so drop everything, because that, all that is the mechanism running within you to not get you to succeed, you see? That is your particular Self-sabotage, that's your particular way 
so that you can say later on, yeah, I did try, didn't I? But I kept changing my mind. I'm so frustrated. And then you can just stay in that, doing something about it rather than just doing it. See what I mean? So don't negotiate with that voice inside you that changes your opinions. Take that, as soon as that happens, take that as a, as a cue. Take that as a cue to drop into inner silence. Take, train, you'll have to hypnotize yourself. You'll have to train yourself. As soon as all that starts, that bollocks in your brain starts, right? Start feeling the soles of your feet. Again, I would recommend you start doing Tai Chi. It will change you so much. Or do Jiu Jitsu, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, or uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at least, BJJ. Start taking at least two or three classes a week with an aim to get a black belt by in five years. And I promise you, you will be in a completely different place within yourself. You can start Tai Chi uh, at any local place, find a good one. Your, the whole thing is to slow yourself down so you can plug into inner silence when the bullshit starts in the head. And that will uh, save you untold problems in life. Uh, oh man, you know what? Just go. Why? You know, how many people have, do I have to, how many times do I have to remove this guy? A hide user on this channel. Yeah, I think it's that one. Yeah, I, off you go. I don't care what your motivations were. I don't have the time. I don't have the patience. So get lost. Uh, Daniel Lissandru. Hello, one question. How can you ground easily when you are telepathically connected to too many dimensions? Um, yeah, if anyone else has got an answer to that, go for it. Otherwise, uh, buy the book, not the audiobook, the book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Read it three times through cover to cover. This is for the gentleman uh, who is telepathically connected to many, many dimensions. Read it cover to cover. And then take the next three years to apply that book in your life. That will truly answer your question as a journey. You will have taken a journey and a quest to answer that question for yourself. And trust me, after the three years, you will be so grounded, you will be anchored, you will be so well grounded and you will know yourself a lot better. And another one, uh, today's Tai Chi recommendation day so go and do, start doing Tai Chi at least two, three times a day, for, uh, a week formally and every day by yourself. I guarantee you within six months, you will have, uh, you know, embodied the answer to your question. Uh, you have the book, but uh, yeah, I would, uh, yeah, tr apply it. That's the thing, Daniel, apply Apply the book. That's very important. What practical skills, Ozzy is saying, what practical skills should one be good at before losing the human form? Uh, you don't want to pursue losing the human form. Honestly, it's... Um, it's a little bit of a paradox. The moment you start pursuing some future goal, uh, you, that's it, that's it for you. you you're finished, you're finished. <laughs> it's like Alice in Wonderland, where she wants to get to the Queen's castle, if anyone remembers that bit. And she starts walking towards the castle, but she finds that the more she walks towards the castle, the further away the castle gets. And so she meets the Cheshire Cat, and she asks, the, I think it's the Cheshire cat she meets and asks the cat, well, what's happening? You know, why is the, I keep walking towards it. And um, yeah, he got it. Uh, and uh, the castle keeps receding. And the Cheshire cat says, do the opposite, go the opposite way to reach your destination. Turn around, go the opposite way. And Alice does that. And 
she reaches the castle. So it's that kind of thing. You cannot pursue losing the human form as a future goal. You already, you already sunk your ship right there. I, am, I know monks, Tibetan monks, left the West, grow a beard, a blonde beard, uh, and became a sadhu in India for 40 years, fasting on the Ganga River and chanting the name of Lord Krishna. And it's just a fool pursuing losing the human form. A complete fool uh, changed one fuckery for another. <laughs> Toltecs laugh at this stuff, man. It's like, wow, the average man's in insanity is truly supreme. Um, Norman, all the tips you see on internet about lucid dreaming and becoming the Nawal is pure BS. Yeah, I, I agree to, to, a, to an extent. You know, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And remember, whatever I'm saying here is, I will repeat this again, it's a big, it's a big caveat to every, everything I say. I don't believe my own bullshit. I really don't. I do not believe my own bullshit. And I urge you not to do the same. Do not believe my bullshit. If I say, oh, dreaming is useless, not necessarily. That's just me just guessing. <laughs> Which puts you, the listener or the watcher or the audience in a tricky position because I have just thrust you out of the paradigm of believing, disbelieving the three bullshits. I did a live on this. Go and watch it. It's really good. The three bullshits. Relating to someone on the level of believing or disbelieving. I believe them. I don't believe them. Relating to someone on the level of, is it true or is it false? Oh, what they're saying must be true. Oh, what they're saying is really false. And the third one, I agree or don't agree. Relating to someone in terms of agreements. I do agree with an arm. Yes, yes, yes. I don't agree with an arm. No, no, no. <laughs> These three bullshits make you so manipulatable by any half-decent warrior that comes along will scam you right out of all your energy. So stay away from these three bullshits. Go and watch that live. It's a very uh, interesting live. It'll, it'll give you a lot of valuable stuff. Stay with what is useful. The problem with what is useful is you have to self-verify. If an arm says dreaming is bull bullshit, and another person claims, yeah, most of the stuff on the internet is bullshit. Well, then, if that is useful or not, you're going to have to spend a few years verifying whether dreaming is useful to you or not. You see what I mean? It takes work and it's expensive. Knowledge is always expensive. Norman, uh, so why continue? If everything you say is BS, I'm a listener because you've been becoming wrong and more wrong than ever. Great. Your first video was still in line, but since you used drugs, it <laughs> ruined you. Excellent, good. Now that uh, free therapy, excellent, good. Uh, keep, keep practicing your therapy. I think you have a long way to go. Wild Princess, when your awareness is starting to freeing itself and scary things happen, you start to feel stuff you didn't notice earlier. Are they real or is there real danger or maybe it is only unknown. Yeah, very good. You know, I, I like this question. Yeah, I like this question. Um, for the Toltec warriors, the only way, known way to free awareness is through inner silence. And all inner silence work will bring out fear. I'll tell you about myself. When I was undergoing training and doing rigorous inner silence work. I hit a point in my life, in my days, living out the days, uh, I, I would go down to, I was living in London those days and uh, there was a Victoria Park, a park called Victoria Park, it's quite a big famous park. I would spend all hours of the day and night in there. I was literally just on a bench by the duck ponds and wandering around just incredible, like amazing, completely silent, you know, inside, pure awareness, fantastic. But then it would come time to sleep 
and I would be freaked out. Well, creeped out is more, more of a accurate. I feel creeped out. I was like, there's some, I don't know what. So I started keeping a, I had a book of Bruce Lee. And you know, Bruce Lee, he's just a, such a symbol of fearlessness and power, right? All his, anything, any visual of Bruce Lee is this amazing guy just looking amazing, right? So I started keeping that book under my pillow and sleeping with the lights on. <laughs> that carried on. That carried on for, wow, quite like seven, eight months. I went through this whole phase. My ship sailed through the waters of fear. Unreasoning fear. I had no clue where it was coming from. No idea. Things would just creep me out. And it was all just, oh my God. And I would wait for daylight to come quickly. Right? So you got to get through what you got to get through. Keep anchoring into inner silence. And let go of all the rest. Do what you need to do. If there is a symbol of power that you can have with you uh, as you feel afraid, a crystal or a, a family heirloom, whatever it is, people have many different things, right? Or a favorite book or a video, DVD, whatever. Uh, keep that close and do what you can. It will pass, but you need to go through this phase. However, I'm assuming that it is inner silence that you're working on, authentic inner silence, true presence. All right. Last question, guys. Last question. Someone said this was my question also. Katrina saying, uh, okay, I can't. Um, William, and I'm concerning agreements. What is the Toltec view on this word? Okay, I've uh, been working with the four agreements for years. Don Reese seems to have a broader perspective than the dictionary definition. Yes. Yes, he... Uh, he, he, that book is a great book, The Four Agreements, and he's doing great work. I don't know much about him beyond the book itself, and I haven't read the book myself. I've kind of thumbed through it. And it looked great. I mean, uh, I had no, you know, no, no nothing, you know, it was great. Uh, but uh, what is the Toltec view on this word? There's no set Toltec views anyway. Do you know what I mean? The Toltec path is a is a body of knowledge that is only just self knowledge. So uh, one could say, what is, what do the agreements mean for you, really? I know it's a bullshit way to answer <laughs> your question, but really, you you know, you can't pin down the Toltec path. I mean, I know, I realize, I say it in my lives all the time, the Toltecs say this and the warriors say that. But it's all bullshit. I mean, it's a way to put things across to you guys, to hand over a body of knowledge. You know, uh, in the olden days, uh, it was oral tradition, right? And this, in this modality of this time, YouTube lives or YouTube videos are the oral tradition. I'm passing orally on to you guys trying to pass on a body of knowledge that also automatically becomes a record, right? For future use. So there's no, it's, it's what are they for you? What are they for you? The definition, this much I will say, the definition must be, the definition for you of the ag word agreement must be anchored in life evidence. If the four agreements or one agreement out of them or any agreements are not unfucking you from before, then no matter what, how much lovely stuff it sounds in your head or amazing things in your head, it's pointless. It's, not, it's, it's got no point to it. It's worthless, right? So life evidence, and don't just think, yeah, yeah, I have improved. I'm, I'm a better person. No. That's all just up here, nothing. Look at your life evidence. Life evidence is if someone says, I'm gonna become strong, they start with one push-up, next week they do three, next week they do 10, and they're getting stronger and stronger. The number of push-ups is telling them, it's, it's life evidence. They're not just sitting in an armchair and thinking, yeah, I'm getting stronger now, but there's no life evidence. You see what I mean? So always anchor your definitions in life evidence. 
remember this. Alrighty. Great question and answer session. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed the trolling. Enjoyed the, you know, every um, people's self importance coming up. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Uh, there's so many fantastic questions you guys have asked, but we'd be here for a very long time. So we'll call it a day here. I have my singing practice to do the evening bit. I shall do that. A little pro tip before, before we go. Spirulina. If you don't imbibe it, source good organic good spirulina. I take it in tablets and uh, have it every day. Its nutritional value is very much overlooked. Start imbibing it every day. Buy it, imbibe it. Secondly, this is a task all my apprentices get very early on. Chew your mouthfuls. Chew your mouthfuls. Chew them. A wonderful <coughs> friend of mine, a yoga teacher, she introduced me to this concept uh, many years ago. She used to say, your stomach doesn't have teeth. Chew your food, imbibe spirulina, it'll help. It'll help your body. Your body will thank you for these two practices. On that note, anything else? Put it in the comments. I shall see you next week. Walk in freedom. Bye for now.